Welcome back to that and to Bigo. While we switch gears a bit, there have been a few recent cases in the media where members of the public have complained of individuals claiming to be CSO officers conducting interviews. Uh, the director of statistics is here, and uh, he's also joined by the senior statistical survey officer. And they're here to clarify some of the details surrounding this matter. So we'd like to introduce the director of the Central Statistical Office, Sean O'Brien, and the senior statistical survey officer, Louis Gomez. Gentlemen, welcome. So before we get into it, I'd like to just recap. What is the role and main function of the CSO? Okay, um, well, the CSO, the Central Statistical Office, as it is known in the literature, is a national statistical office. So national statistical offices exist in countries throughout the world, and the main function is to produce official statistics. So it will be, we'll give our data concerning a wide range of socioeconomic issues and variables, you know, so we produce GDP, we produce um, births, deaths, a wide range of statistics so as to um, to look at the condition of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, to give the, uh, uh, the government in particular and other stakeholders an idea of the socioeconomic state of the country so as to better plan and to allow for evidence-led planning in the, in the country. Very extensive. What are some of the challenges facing the Central Statistical Office as it pertains to acquiring this information? Okay, so how long is this program? Because <laughs> the, the, the problems are many. First of all, the CSO faces uh, an issue where it is not legislatively empowered to collect all the data that it needs to collect. So we need to collect data from a number of government agencies and ministries. And um, collectively, these agencies and ministries are known in the literature as the national statistical system. So first of all, we should understand that the data doesn't just uh, grow in the CSO. We don't just conjure it up. We collect it from the source, we process these data, and then we disseminate them as uh, official statistics. But the problem is, a lot of the source agencies, um, their legislation prevents the CSO from collecting data from them because of confidentiality and secrecy laws. In other territories, uh, the National Statistical Office would represent an exception to these laws, but it doesn't in Trinidad and Tobago, mainly because the CSO's Statistics Act is, uh, was last reviewed in 1982. So it, it is in desperate need of an update and a, and a review. Government is working towards this. Uh, they're going to transform the CSO into the new National Statistical Institute of Trinidad and Tobago. That new body is envisioned to have the legislative potency so as to be able to collect data from the NSS. So the main challenge of the CSO is that we, we don't have the authority to collect data that we need to. So typically, data that's not available from the CSO are not available to the CSO in the first place. Hopefully, the NSITT will solve that. And how soon can we expect this? Uh, it's anticipated that in 2019, the NSITT would come into being. So the legislation is the main uh, instrument by which this will be brought into fruition, and it's far advanced. So the it's... We're just into the fine-tuning stage of the legislation, and, well, we're all looking forward to it because statistics really make the lives of the population better. Yes, okay, great. I'd like to um, introduce Mr. Gomez into this conversation, and my, my question to you, what sort of instruments are used to acquire data, especially as it pertains on the fields? Do you use surveys, phone calls? Mostly surveys, mm -hmm. where there's face-to-face -face interviews with our field officers, with the community at large. And what sort of challenges do you face on the field? Let's get into it. Okay, we have many <laughs> challenges. One, people are not aware of the CSO as collecting information on a regular basis. The survey we do in the CSSP, which is a continuous sampling of, and survey of the population. So people think we come every 10 years as a census. Yes. 
So when we go to them, they always say, there's no census. We didn't hear about it. We don't, we didn't read it in the papers. But this is an ongoing survey we do every day out in the field. Yeah. And <coughs> with the crime, it's difficult for some of our interviewers. Uh, some of them have to hide at times with gunshots. Some of police will tell them, don't go. People will show them guns, tell them that no, we're not here. So it's difficult, and we have the weather to deal with. Plus, there are multitudes of apartment buildings that's inaccessible. There's gates, gated communities. Dogs. Dogs. And uh, these yeah. people are not so welcoming as before. And as well, I mean, yeah. crime obviously and is, is one of the. Recently, concerns. in the Roystonia area, after Saturday the 21st, we went in there. There were quite a number of us went in, about seven interviewers, because these people are not home on during the day. So we took the Saturday to do the job. This is the our field officers. They are not compensated to work on Saturdays. They, they shouldn't work on Saturdays or so after hours. But it's difficult to get people. So they do what they have to do to get the information. And yet, some bright person, because they had some contact with a media house, you know, called up that they are fake interviewers on, on, on in Roystonia. And there were a number of comments written against the, that. And some said to beat them, shook the dog at them, you know. And it was difficult because our interviewers, when they go out after that, this week, gone there, there were a lot of other areas that people say, oh, look, come this way now, oh, look, you know. And because people are not aware, we are always out there. Yes. And not because it's not a census, we are not doing the survey work. Our officers are ID'd, there's their badge, people could look at their number, they can call in the office and see if it's genuine. So we want to encourage the people out there, when you see the field officers from the CSO, inquire first before you condemn or quick to judge or shook dog at them. And even the upscale communities, it's more difficult. The people we see who uses the information, who want the CSO information, who will come into the office for information, these are the people who are reluctant to give information as well. You know, to be very honest, um, you know, even I would be very skeptical as well to let anybody into my compound. And But as you mentioned, there's a number to call to verify the identification of some of these officers, yeah, correct? The office regular, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what I can say about that as yeah. well, huh? um, the problem is that the statistics are needed to help the very communities that are refusing to give the data as well many people are not aware that the Statistics Act provides uh, the, the law that um, it's against the law to refuse to answer the questions from a CSO officer. You can be imprisoned on summary conviction for six months and be fined for $2,000. And under the new NSITT, these fines and sentences are going up. Mm -hmm. So... Um, we have never employed that before because it's always better to get the data uh, through cooperation, through moral suasion. And that's why we're here today, to ask the, uh, the community at large, the nation at large, could you please cooperate with the CSO? We know that the crime out there is a real issue and that if you see someone approaching your gate, you should exercise caution. We, we, we're all for that. Please contact our officers and um, the person will give you the name from the gate. And if you have any uh, reservation, you can call our officers. We shall um, verify that that person is in the area at that time. Now, a lot of persons also ask, well, why don't you advertise? Yes. Now, CSSP is a, is a, a unique exercise. The Continuous Sample Survey of Population is based on an uh, area sample. So. We do not know ahead of time, too far ahead of time, which area would be sampled. Because it's so a random sample that is generated by our computers. So how soon do you know? Um, we may know a few weeks ahead of time. And I mean, we could work with that. Yeah, but um, advertising, I don't know if you know, <laughs> but there's been this downturn in the economy. 
our statistics would have said Even that. Even coming on, on television, you know, mm -hmm. or, or sending us something, you know, it's something that we could probably mention. That, you know, sure, sure. Or so. we, we'll, we'll definitely... Uh, so we can raise with each other sure, sure, and, sure. and make this thing work. We'll definitely double our efforts to publicize the areas that we, are, that we shall visit. Yeah. However, it, because of the, uh, the tight budgetary conditions that the, uh, the government at large, and uh, in particular the CSO, it may not be possible to advertise um, each and every area because the C and CSSP stands for continuous. This is all year long. Mm -hmm. we, it, will, it will take every cent that we have in our budget to, uh, to advertise all year long. So um, we need the public to understand that the CSO officers are in the field every day of every week, of every month, of every year, and we are collecting data to help you. You, the public, will be helped uh, because it will empower the planners and policy makers to make evidence-led decisions. Yes. And that's, uh, that's the best way yes. to, to move forward, to move a country forward. Sure. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about the identification aspect of it, because I'm sure we have, we have some very creative bandits out there, yeah. <laughs> and they can try to duplicate these things. So how would you describe the badge? What do we look we, for? We have a badge. This is our ID. Most times, they will have it around their neck like this. Mm -hmm. So there is the... All right, so we'd like you to hold it a little steady so we could possibly zoom in on it. Okay. All right, and... You can you tilt it? Yeah. Great. So we're just zooming on so it there. So our ID numerators or field officers will be wearing one of this. Mm -hmm. And also there's a number to call. All right. Yeah. What is the number that we, we can call? 624-7311. 624-7311. Is there a uniform that you all wear on the field? No. The CSO don't have a uniform. Okay. So, all right. But, um, uh, what I've done is I've gotten these colorful vests. Mm -hmm. They complain about the color. But these colorful vests, uh, the, so that they can more easily be identified. The, the regu remember, we are part of central government. Yes. And so the regulations are, and rules of government apply to the CSO. And you, you can't really buy uniforms for persons other than messengers and drivers. But what we have done, we've gotten... Um, the vests that identify them as a bright orange yeah. vest. And uh, so look out for your CSO interviewer in his or uh, her bright orange vest with the ID. Now the bandits may be creative, but they can't but they won't know the names of the officers. So it's wise so to make that call. Sure. So if it is that you are not sure and uh, and you feel uncomfortable, we encourage you call the number and uh, and verify the name of the person. We we will know if that person is in that area. So the the mischief doer wouldn't know these facts ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So you can verify it with us. And how many people per household? One person, usually one interviewer Interview. will be in a household. So you have about seven or eight in a community in general you working know, at the same have, time. We have a lot of um, we divided in north and south. Okay. So. In South, we have about 18 interviewers on the field and, and not. That's a little bit of people for a large area. Yeah, but we do in different areas. We okay. do a ED, which is a smaller area mm -hmm. that the interviewer will canvas. And people take us for property tax. So they are not welcoming. Yeah. They feel we are out to get to know their business. They take us for bandits. Um, we want to kidnap them. We want to know what they have in their house to come back and rob them. But we are not asking to go in anybody's house. Okay, so it could be done right by the gates. Sure. Sometimes not much information we need. How many people live in the house? Yeah, what are some time? of the questions? What do you ask? We ask how many people live here. Mm -hmm. um, the head of the household. Mm -hmm. We want your proper address. Um, how many people are over? 15, 15. Okay, that's 15. Age, yeah. okay. How many are under? Okay. And how many male, how many female? Basically, mm -hmm. that's one of the things we do. That's when we are listing. Mm -hmm. And based on the random selection of households, we will come back in that area about a week or two after to interview about five, six households in that area. So people will find you 
by the new barbarian come by me, but yeah. the, the sample did not fall by oh, that okay. person. So right. we could take you and miss you. Hmm. Well, that's the thing you might hmm. think. So maybe five or six people. I mean, think you're just targeting yeah. me. Yeah. So you that is. I mean? So people yeah. are very. But we're not doing everybody in the area or on the street. We hmm. might do five buildings or five households. So if you if you didn't come by, you doesn't mean. We don't want You're not to. interested in We're in a me. sample. It's like eating the whole <laughs> yeah. pila out to know how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just want a spoon first. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's an excellent analogy. Now, um, it's important to note that the CSO has been conducting this exercise over 50 something years, yeah. as before I was born. Notwithstanding my premature grace, <laughs> I wasn't born when they started this thing. And, it, and the, I want the public out there to know that the data are absolutely confidential. Okay, good. Right? Mm -hmm. um, should anyone in the CSO divulge any information, there are severe penalties, three years in prison, massive fines. So it hasn't happened before in 50 years, and it won't happen at all. The data, is, uh, the data are um, aggregated. So we know there are 80,000 persons in this area. We wouldn't know your name. We wouldn't use your uh, personal information. It's, it's all aggregated. That's, so the data are collected for statistical purposes, not for individual identification. It's against the law for us to identify your individual information. So Good. Uh, so that number to call is 6247 Yes. All right, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you so much. And we can work something out just as Wasser would send us something saying there would be water disruptions in certain areas. You know, we, we don't mind working with you just to probably mention a one-liner on uh -huh. a nightly basis or whatever the case is in our newscast. I'm sure we could work something out. Okay, we enjoy free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. we take a short break. Much more when we return.